am joined now by Dr. Anthony Fauci, President Biden's chief medical advisor and director of the National Institute of Allergy and Infectious Diseases. Dr. Fauci, thank you so much for being with us. Good to be with you. Thank you for having me. Well, so you said a few weeks ago that we are out of the, quote, full-blown explosive pandemic phase. So, Dr. Fauci, what are we in right now, particularly since we are really starting to see an increase in cases throughout the country? Well, First of all, it's important to point out that the pandemic is not over. We are still having a pandemic. The cases came down for what I referred to as that explosive phase where we're having 900,000 cases a day and tens of thousands of hospitalizations and over 3,000 deaths per day. We're much lower than that right now, but we are creeping up again. And that's one of the concerns that we have, that as we start to creep up with cases and hospitalizations, although as shown on the chart there, it's not nearly as high as the peak as we have, it's going in the wrong direction. And therefore we can't let our guard down, which is the reason why we continue to emphasize to people that if you've not been vaccinated, get vaccinated. And if you are vaccinated, make sure you get your booster shot when it becomes available for you in the time from your primary vaccination. Well, so, Dr. Fauci, let's talk about boosters. You know, you're still recommending that people do get those boosters. So if you have two, are you good to go? Should you maybe just plan to get one every year? Kind of what would be your recommendation when it comes to boosters? Well, well right now, if you've gotten the mRNA vaccine, uh, that's two doses. Everybody should get the third dose boost. That's it. Everybody with, with no exceptions there. The question is, what about the third, the fourth shot or the second boost? Right now, as we know, some time ago, the FDA and the CDC said that people 50 years of age or older are eligible, and particularly those who are elderly are recommended to get it, and certainly those with underlying conditions. So that stands, and I would recommend that if people are in those categories, they do get boosted. The real question that the FDA is now seriously considering, and we're getting data to help inform us to make the right choice, is that as we get into the early fall, we're gonna be making a decision this summer about what of the boosters should we be giving? Should we be giving a booster of the original vaccine or should we give a hybrid or what's called a bivalent, namely a boost that contains more than one of the variants that we've been involved with? I believe by the time we get to the fall, it will be recommended that everybody, since waning immunity does occur, the immunity does not last indefinitely. And I wouldn't be surprised that you'll be hearing about getting a booster as we get into the early fall, very similar to what we do with influenza when we try to get people vaccinated by the middle or end of October. So, you know, if these case numbers keep going up, is it realistic after so much mask fatigue um, to maybe see cities and school districts reinstate those mask mandates? Because the reason, you know, for putting those mandates in place would still exist. But people at this point, do you think they're willing to go back to wearing masks again? You know, obviously, it's a very, very charged and sensitive area when you use the word mandate it creates a lot of bit of difficulty. One thing I could say for sure is that if cases go up, you would recommend that people actually do put a mask on when they're in indoor congregate settings. Whether or not it's mandated, it makes good public health common sense that if you have a big outbreak of infections in your community and you see that happening around you, that when you get into an indoor setting, you use some common sense and wear a mask. You know, and I think nuance really, really does matter there. And, and I noticed that you use the word recommend. And so maybe is that really what it's a difference of maybe saying recommend versus, again, those mandates where people feel like they're being forced to do something? You know, I think that's a very, very good point. And that's the reason why I try to stay away from the word mandate. You use the word mandate and you immediate trigger an almost radioactive reaction that people say you're trying to force them what to do. I take a different approach. I say, what kind of risk are you willing to take, particularly if you're an elderly person or a person who has an underlying condition, or even if you're very healthy, but you live in a household with someone who is vulnerable to a severe outcome, so that if you get infected, and even though you don't get a severe outcome yourself, you bring the infection home, 
that might create a serious difficulty for someone that you care about. My feeling on that is I would recommend, if that's the situation with you, that you do wear a mask when you're indoors. I don't use the word mandate. I say it might be common sense to do that. All right. That's fair. And, you know, Dr. Fauci, we've now been in this pandemic for entering the third year at this point. There have been lots of ups, lots of downs. We want to ask a personal question now. Do you see yourself doing this job at this time next year? (laughs) I don't know. I'd have to be perfectly honest with you. Right now, I'm focusing on the challenge at hand, which is to make sure that we protect as many people as we possibly can. I don't think about what you just said. I mean, someday I will, but I'm not doing it at this moment. All right. That is a fair question. And and basically, is this just again, I know that's something that we've talked about uh, before. I know it's something that you certainly have commented on. But, you know, shifting from pandemic to endemic, is this really something we just have to learn to live with the case numbers going up, case numbers going down? That's really just kind of the way of life at this point. No, I think the answer to that is probably yes. And the reason I say that is, you know, we're not going to eradicate this the way we did with smallpox. We only eradicated one virus in all of public health history. And we did that with a virus that didn't change much and that we had a very, very good duration of immunity, either from infection or vaccination. I don't even think we're going to eliminate it from the country the way we did with measles and polio, because, again, those viruses did not change. You didn't get a lot of variants with measles and with polio and the protection that was, in, that was given by vaccine and by infection was virtually lifelong. We don't have that with COVID. We have a virus that has variants that changes and that the durability of immunity is not indefinite. So I think we can, and I think it's perfectly feasible that we will be able to bring it to a low enough level that it won't interfere with us from a social societal standpoint. It won't interfere with the jobs, with school, with employment, with doing entertainment things indoors. We will have to live with it because it's not going to disappear. Hopefully, we'll live with that at a level that's very, very low and that you don't see a lot of morbidity and mortality. Yeah, that is certainly the hope. All right, Dr. Fauci, based on your previous answer, we'll go ahead and pencil you in for an interview at this time next year. Thank you so much for your time today, sir. We appreciate it. Uh, Thank you. Good to be with you. Thank you for having me. Thank you for watching. Click the red subscribe button below so you can get more of News Nation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.